It's summertime and events happen a mile a minute. Hi, I'm Frank Mahoney. Yes, the complete camcorder guy. Anyway, the first weekend of August was an action videographer's weekend. Over at Washougal, Washington was a national motocross event. And then on Saturday at PIR, I visited with the Woodstock Racing Team. Now, having followed them all season long, videotaping their progress, but then I went to Portland Meadows for the women's volleyball tournament and thought to myself, and thought to myself, hmm, hmm, I long for the long summer days with nothing to do, but boy, this area has really grown. So let's make a cable access show with a small town feel. And I want to show you, and I want to tell you, look, now let's look at the Woodstock racing team. Let's go talk to Jess Hyten right now. We've been following him through the 1995 season. He's been involved with lots of different types of racing over the years, and uh, his history goes back to drag racing, go-kart racing, motorcycle racing, even uh, those little boats that you run around with the radio control things, right. as I understand, right? Yes. Um, how'd you happen to get involved with Formula V? Well, <laughs> we, uh, my wife, my ex-wife and I had a rental house, and the people that rented it had a couple old Formula Vs. And the, uh, the guy went to work for Walker Evans, who runs the off-road trucks. And so he left his wife in charge of the Formula Vs and said, sell them. And she approached me, and I made her a ridiculous offer. A month later, she called me up and said, you still want them? Now, you had no intentions of actually getting into Formula B before that. It just, just happened to work in that direction then. That's correct, yes. Wow. Now, is it, is it cheaper for Formula V, more expensive? How does it work in that sense? Well, it's supposedly a cheap sport. Uh, the racing is not cheap, as we all know. Uh, Formula V really is supposed to be a little less expensive, and I indeed it is. Uh, it is a little less expensive, but it still costs a lot of money to field a front-running car. Speaking of front-running, you're one of the top dogs, have been for a while. How have you maintained that position? I understand you're the pole sitter, pole sitter today. Yes, we were fortunate enough to get the pole today. Um, it just, I've... I've got a degree in engineering, and uh, I, I work pretty hard on uh, basically just designing the car. We, we, this is our own design, our own car and everything. Uh, the, the engine, we're just starting to get into the engine development now. We're building a dyno, uh, doing flow bench work, and so on and so forth. But it just takes a lot of hard work, a lot of money and hard work. And this is, I'm just pretty dedicated to it. It's, this is my life at the moment. So do you plan on, on creating cars for other people, other drivers? Mm -hmm. Not really, no. I, if, if, if someone wants a car, we may consider building them one, but I, that's not my business, no. Okay, now I, I understand now you're pretty much it on the West Coast. You, you hold the points standing, and uh, your, your next trip is what, to California or maybe back to the Midwest? Well, we're going to California to the Pacific Coast Championships at Sears Point, and uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a hell of a race. <laughs> that's a, that's a racetrack. It's, a, it, it's fantastic. This year, uh, the lineup of uh, drivers is fantastic. Uh, two ex-national champions will be there. Uh, there. It's just many, uh, like maybe like five ex-Pacific Coast champions will be there. Uh, the points leader from uh, the Rocky Mountain Division will be there. It, it's going to be a good race. Then back east at all? Yes, we're going to Ohio after that. Uh, we've got to be very careful in California not to damage the car. If we do, we're going to be in trouble. Uh, we, we'll go down to Sears Point the 15th of September. The 25th, this car has to be on its way back to Ohio. Well, this August 5th today, have a great race out there today and have fun with it. Thank you very much.
name's Phil Rice, and this is Racer's Profile. I get the unique opportunity today to interview my teacher and the winner of today's Rose Cup National Race, Jess Heitman. How'd the race go today, Jess? Well, it, was, uh, it wasn't easy as usual, but uh, we were very fortunate to win this one. Uh, the car ran absolutely flawlessly, and uh, we had a lot of help from uh, other people, crew members and stuff, to, to get this put together, and we uh, certainly appreciate all that. Well, it looked like you uh, did very well out there. Uh, you had the field pretty well wired. Uh, everybody in the stands were pretty impressed with your effort today. It looked like everything went really well. Uh, what's up next for you? Well, we're going to probably go to Canada and race uh, the 8th and 9th of July, I think. It's just kind of a fun race. Uh, we have to get serious again uh, the first week in August. We're going to have another national race here. So we'll be pretty serious about winning that one. And then uh, the week later, if we need to, we'll go to Sears Point, California and run a national race down there. Uh, we, this, we're leading the North Pacific Division of in national points right now. And we need to maintain that lead because uh, it means money to us to go back to uh, Ohio to the nationals. We're now going to have an opportunity to talk to Alan Harrington, the third place finisher in today's race, and my teammate. How did the race go today, Alan? Uh, not quite as well as I had hoped. Um, we, it didn't rain for me. That was unfortunate. It uh, seems like I can do a little bit better in the rain. But uh, all in all, a real happy day. We uh, a lot better than I anticipated when I signed up for this race. So uh, it's it's a good day. We've got first place and third place. That's a good. That's teamwork. We're just standing here after the Rose Cup uh, national race for Formula V, Formula 440, and I'm here with uh, Peter Harris. Peter is uh, definitely uh, one of the, uh, what is say, eldest people racing Formula V. He, that does not mean uh, that he isn't one of the best, and we want to get a few words with him right now. Peter, what did you think about the race today? Uh, it was very, very competitive. When I saw the halfway sign, I was really thinking, I don't know if I can go to the other half, but... Uh, when you're into racing, you, uh, you really put your muscle into it. <laughs> well, Peter, you uh, you picked up quite a bit of time uh, from when you started on Friday till today. Well, I've got a new setup on the car, and I've been, been learning it uh, every session I go out there, and every session I do a little bit better because it's a new setup and I learn it. Well, Peter, <laughs> I, I don't know how to ask you this, but I, I would like to... Uh, you, you've been racing Formula B for a long time now. 25 you, years. 25 years. Yeah. It's, uh, that's, that's a pretty long time. Uh, uh, are we well, going to see? Are we going to see another 25 years out of you? Oh, well, I hope so. There's no letting up now. <laughs> and uh, I've got two boys that are into racing, and so we've come. The boys have been with me for all 25 years as the pit crew or racing or something or other. So it's been a good family event. A new one, Quinn Posner. Quinn's uh, kind of a. The, the, the young lion, so to speak, here in this. And these guys had one heck of a race going on. Uh, they were a little bit for fourth and fifth, I believe. Is that right? That's it. Well, you give us a little uh, insight on what was going on. You guys were beating on each other pretty hard out there. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, we were setting it up for the uh, for the last lap. As you know, that's where it counts, is where the checkered flag is. And so we were counting down the last three laps and uh, just trying to get into the right position at the right time. And uh, as you know, you get the long draft going down the straightaway and you get another draft coming back. So it's a question of how you set it up. Uh, for that last lap, and that's what we were working on. Who set it up best? Well, I, th I think on the, I had it set up, but it was one lap too early. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had a the little clock in, in my car said there was about 20 seconds left in the race, and uh, so I passed him going down the back straight into seven, thinking he wouldn't be able to draft by me by start finish, but there was one more lap left, so it didn't quite work out, and he got me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a question of race. I made a mistake. On the next to the last lap in the chicane, and uh, he walked right by me. So uh, we were pretty evenly matched. I think for the whole race, there wasn't a half a second difference in our driving for the, for most of the race. It was just a question of how the, the last lap ended up. Well, that's pretty neat. We're already glad uh, this went on. And now, uh, folks, once again, old age and treachery prevails <laughs> over youth and skill. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's good. Thank you. <laughs>
How's it going? How was your race? Oh, too exciting. Very too exciting. exciting. Hi, this is Racer Profile, and I'm Scott Moyer. Let's take a look at some of the spec drivers and, and uh, the race cars that we'll be following throughout the day. This car right here belongs to Joyce Shea. Joyce has been following through the circuit and has been going through all the various different trappings of the car here in order to be able to race every weekend. It's basically a ride and drive situation for her. Let's go meet her now. Joy Shea, here with the spec driving, right across from the Formula V group. And as, as I understand it, you guys drive about the same speed. How did you get started with all this? Oh, my beginning, my first um, got interested was uh, watching Indy 500, and I said, I have to try it. And I went to France. Now, as I understand it, this is kind of a turnkey situation where you, what, arrive and how did you put it? Arrive and drive. You just show up and you have the car ready and set up for you to just go racing. I would think that would be kind of expensive to do in that sense. They prepare the car totally for you and then you just arrive and with your race suit and helmet and all and start to drive, right? Yes. Um, it's reasonable for me because I don't know the car that much so I can just arrive and with the mechanic prepare everything. Um, it's pretty good. Now, the rumor has it it's around $2,000 per weekend. What does that actually consist of for a weekend? A weekend, uh, for about $2,000, you can have one-day practice, a regional and a um, national race with um, SCCA practice. So it's about four-day um, weekend, $2,000. Now, we've been following you a bit, and we know that you drive in Seattle and Portland and back, back east and also Las Vegas. You plan to make this a career for yourself, then, it sounds like. Yes, um, I want to make it a professional career. Uh, I love racing and I like to drive any truck I can go to. Well, from things that I've seen so far, I think you'll be right there with them. Thank you very much. Thank Scott you. Moyer. Jolene obviously has been greatly involved with this whole process with you here, Jess. Um, what exactly does she mean to your team? She means a very great deal to our team. Uh, just to give you a very brief history on Jolene, I've, I've known her for a number of years, uh, both she and her husband, and uh, then she was divorced a few years ago. Uh, she uh, has been my bookkeeper at Auto Marine Service Company for quite a few years, and in my office, we have a big window, and you can look out the window and see into the shop. So Jolene would be in there working on the books at nights and stuff, and uh, Alan Harrington and I were out there building a race car. So <laughs> anyway, you can see her turn around and look, and pretty soon walks out in the shop, see what we're doing. The next thing I know, she's out in the shop all the time working on the race car. She isn't doing my books anymore. So uh, she's, she's took over the job of being crew chief. She talks on the radio to me, tells me, gives me all the information during races and qualifying and stuff on the radio. And she just takes care of so much stuff with a race car, and she's got to be where she's extremely knowledgeable about the workings of the car and stuff. Does she ever expect a race? I don't think so, but we do our best on trying to get her into a car every once in a while. And in fact, we're, this weekend, uh, they're giving rides at lunchtime. So we're going to take and pay the $5 and get her in a, in a road racing Corvette. Ooh, take that sounds like laps. fun. I think I might, might want to try on that myself. <laughs> you might want to do that. It's pretty neat. It's a, it's a good experience. But uh, it gives people that, that don't race or anything else, gives them a, uh, some kind of experience of what road racing is really like. It, you, you need some extra underwear usually. <laughs> sounds good. I'll come prepared. 
I want to go with something that, like that Porsche, where you can really stick it out there. <laughs> oh, you're fine. Or that Corvette. That Corvette would be hot. Excellent. Here we are getting ready to go for a ride. What year is this Corvette? This is a 1988 Corvette. What class does it run in? It runs in what they call B production and the uh, what they call the conference sanctioning body. And the SCCA allows this to run in its class as a conference production B also. So they share uh, they share classes. All right, we're going for it here. Yeah. Oh yes, this has got some acceleration. And then some going down the straight stretch and we're coming up to the festival section. Coming down from four, three, two, and breaking. Goes outside, comes across the apex. Oh yeah, nice. Oh yeah, it shuts it down on. Oh. Fast. That was great of them. Excellent. Coming into corner number one. Oh, yes. Sweeping right hand corner. Coming out to two. And yeah. And two, three. Let's see. Outside. I'm sliding it into the inside. Ooh, heartbreaking. Right into four. Oh, the centrifugal force wants to throw me right out of this car. It's amazing. Coming up to five. Heartbreaking to the right. Late apex on this particular corner. Interesting how this works. Yes. Through six, and onto the back stretch from seven into coming in the corner. Slowing down because we're coming up to a few other cars in front of us here. We're not allowed to actually pass during this, this time right here. So we're shutting it back down a bit. Dennis, how fast are we going actually? Uh, we probably went down the straightaway at about 120. The backside, uh, we were probably doing about 110. What's the maximum speed-wise we can go on this? Oh, down the straightaway without the chicane, we'll hit 150. Excellent. Sounds like fun to me. Going down the straight steps. Hard braking. Two, one, yes, coming down in this festival, tight again, goes inside, it's going through the inside of this guy, nice, corner, nice corner, shot right through it, yes, he's cranking this sucker on, hard breaking into the corner number one, the centrifugal force on this is incredible, it's really fun. Everybody needs to do this at least once in their life, if not for a profession, I think. Oh, this is great. Heartbreaking again now onto to number four. You can feel the front end sliding out and the back end breaking up a little bit. Oh, late eight pass again for five. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is great fun. This guy really hammers this thing, too. It should. We had 148 miles an hour on that one. That was sweet. You know, it's amazing. It doesn't even feel like you're doing any more than maybe about uh, 210. <laughs> that was excellent, Dennis. You like that? That was really fun. I, you know, I think everybody should get a chance to do this at least once. Oh yeah. You do this all the time? Yeah. We uh, give rides twice a year for the Shriners Hospital and for Dornbecker's Hosp Children's Hospital. This is great fun. Mary Thompson, this is a neat thing. I've never seen this before. What is exactly are you doing here? What we do, and we've done it for several years now, probably about six or seven, is we invite the Shrine Hospital to send children out. This year we have 102, 22 participants. That's family, the children, parents, and we give them rides. The drivers adopt them for lunch. 
and they just have a great time. We give them photo IDs and let them see what we do out here. So the kids actually ride in the cars? They actually ride in the cars. The proceeds, all which go to the Shrine Hospital from the rides and from a silent auction that we hold of donated items, all goes to buy computer supplies and computers for the Shrine children. This we get a great feeling. This is excellent. This is excellent. Yeah. What a beautiful day to be doing this on, too. It this is. is. Had you ever gone that fast before? No. Do you know what kind of car you were riding in at all? The uh, neon. The neon. Oh, I saw that one. That was a nice looking car. What was it like going around all the corners? It was scary. Was it scary? Yeah. Did, you, did it make it feel like you were moving around a lot like this? Yeah. Yeah. So how about when he put on the brakes? Did he put on the brakes and it's like sink you right down? Mm-hmm. You think you'd like to race cars later on? No. No, definitely a no. We've got a definite no on that one. Alan, what happened out there today? Well, one thing you learn about racing is to always expect the unexpected. We didn't have too good of an afternoon. Unfortunately, at the uh, start of the race, I, I happened to get a good start coming from eighth position, and we were about uh, five or six wide trying to funnel down into the chicane, and uh, I ended up getting knocked off out into a pothole, and consequently flattened the, uh, the right front tire and smashed the, uh, the brake line down here and lost all my brakes and uh, that put me out for the afternoon. Then my uh, illustrious partner over here had an interesting race. He was leading the race. Uh, uh, it was a, a three-way battle between uh, three of the, the top guys in the country, and Jess uh, made a pass for, for second place, went down into the chicane, and, and the guy behind him in third place lost his brakes, ran into the back of him, and we can see the consequences of that. We have a completely disassembled race car as a result. The, uh, the front suspension got pretty banged up. The uh, rear suspension as well. And uh, Jess ended up with a flat tire too. Both of you are safe though? Oh yeah, yeah. It was a uh, relatively safe accident, fortunately, I'm happy to say. Now I understand Jess got uh, possibly a little airborne when it, when it happened? Yeah, evidently he uh, went over the inside curbing, and which can has the potential to throw you about two or three feet in the air. and depending on the speed, which would be probably about 70, 80 miles an hour down through there. He probably took a nice little ride.